down low as I work very closely with the hauling community. It's not a surprise to them that you're looking at this ordinance. They agree with the content, the content of the ordinance. So their industry has bought off on the ordinance that I prepared. Uh, I'm sure your attorney might have some questions on it. Um, you don't have to license haulers to do this, so we've come up with a different term, even though the state statute that they wrote mentioned licensed haulers. We agree that many municipalities don't license, that they that way they will just have a registry, if you will, of haulers that operate in their town. So when we do the legal notice that's required if you uh, proceed on with this passing this ordinance, we would just I would give you the name of all the known haulers that I am aware of in Lake County, and we would just know this thing. I think that's what Ron Lake Beach is gonna do. They are a little bit ahead of you in this game, so we can use some of their noticing and their processes to help you out as well. I think it's the same. Um, so really what you're going to do if you pass this ordinance, you are basically saying that you intend to move ahead with a commercial franchise three years out and do a three-year study. Nothing's really holding you to that, though, but that's something you have to put in your notes, that you intend to pursue a commercial franchise. That's that the following month, so say you pass in July, in August, they would have to start uh, keeping a record of the number of businesses that have recycling service. Uh, with a contract with them as a hauler. And then every six months, they're going to report to you how many of the businesses in the village of Haynesville are recycled. And they have, so every six months they'll report, and at that last six month reporting period, if they can't document that 50% or more of your businesses are recycled, you can move ahead with the commercial franchise, which has its own process in the statute as well. Um, but if you have no interest, really what I'm trying to get you to do is get the sales out there and get this discussion going with your business community and you guys can decide three years from now what you want to do. Um, so that's one of the provisions in there. Uh, say they do make the 50%, you can keep them on edge every six months. You can have them continue to report. And if they ever get below that 50% for two consecutive six month periods, you can move ahead with the franchise. So theoretically they've got to keep that level of 50% it's a significant uh, area of growth, something that would be very significant to our 60% recycling effort in Lake County. We've got about nine or ten municipalities that are currently interested, and we need more to pass this. So that basically, all of you will look at this as a way to boost recycling in your business sector, which is one of the areas that we're looking at. Um, there, there is a little bit of a decision that you need to make uh, in the ordinance that I sent you. The definition of participation rate is very key. There was no such definition in the statute. So we took our enabling statute and said, hey, this is kind of what we bought. And so the waste industry bought in was what we agreed to there. Now they made, in my opinion, they made a little bit of a mistake when they wrote the statute. What they said was for the denominator, for the total number of businesses, they said that they wanted to know, you have to, they have to report to you the number of businesses that are served with municipal services. With, with hauling services for refuse. So that's the bottom part of the equation. The top part of the equation says the number of non-residential locations that have a contract with the hauler, with that hauler to provide recycling service. Now, that may seem like a nuance, but there are quite a few businesses out there that recycle on their own. They don't have a contract with the hauler. They're going to take it to a drop-off, they're going to take it home and recycle it, or if they're a jewel, they're doing their own recycling at the back of the store with their own bales of cardboard, their own bales of plastic bill, and they're not having an active contract with the hauler. So you can make a choice. You're either going to hold them to the level of the law that says they must, the hauler must have that contract to count as a participating business, or if you want to be more lenient, in my opinion, you'll say if they can report to you that they know some of their customers are recycling but not them, then you will decide to count that as a participation rate. So that's a decision you need to make. My advice there is, if you're intent on moving ahead with the commercial franchise after this three-year study period, make it more difficult for them and restrict it to just the ones they have a contract with. And they're aware that you might do that. We, we, we debated this quite a bit. And both basically said, hey, you guys have the power of pen, you messed up. I'm giving you a break. I'm going to let my members decide what they want to come. So that's a decision you need to make on, on that go from there. Um, 
we will, uh, we are going to help you with this. So what we would do is we're going to set up a dedicated page on our website and every municipality that passes this ordinance will start to track you separately on our website. And then you are required by law, and we'll have to talk to your attorney about this, if you can link to us, will that meet your board and burden under the law to have it on your website? Not with we'll this kind of paste information. We have our so yeah. We will, our thought is we'll do all the record keeping for you. We will want the, the forms that we've developed um, to go to you, but then send to us. And then we'll create the database that you can then link back to and we'll track every town who's doing this. So that's something we're going to help you do. Uh, we would want a good contact person though, so that Amy from our staff knows in Haynesville is like, hey, I need someone to contact, make sure I get those forms in case I think the forms are due. I didn't get a copy of we're also going to want to post uh, a copy of the, the resolution and ordinance that you pass. So every municipality will link a PDF to your exact ordinance as well. So we'll help you with the reporting that's required in the state. Um, and then finally, like I said, this if you don't have an interest in franchising, a lot of municipal officials don't. They don't want to jump into that relationship between their business and the hauler. Um, uh, don't worry about that. That's a decision you can make later. This is not obligating you to do it, even though your intent might be in that notice that that is your intent. Um, so I think, to keep it short and sweet, um, oh, one other thing that we did debate on quite a bit is uh, that last, last six month reporting period, which is key. Say one of the haulers is really dragging them down, and they're like, I'm not saying they're or anything, but to say that all of this decides I'm not going to report. So we, we don't have all the hallmarks reporting, so we don't have the complete understanding of what's happening in, in your town. There was no cutoff in the law. You know, we have a certain amount of time and we have to decide and post the results. Uh, I argued, well, you guys could gain the system and just not report. So we put very strong penalties in there to make a report. But say they don't at the end of this. I'm basically saying to you, at that point, I would recommend legal counsel's consent, obviously, that you wait for all those, those reports to come in. And if they challenge you legally, you're basically your, your response is going to be the clean hand doctrine. You can't come into court as a hauler group saying that this is unfair what you're doing when one of their own haulers didn't report the information you needed to make your final determination. So we went around and around and decided we couldn't fix it, but I wanted to at least get that out there that that's the way I would recommend that's going to be a crucial last data point if they make the 50% of it. So I'll take any questions you have. And I, I didn't know if you wanted me to say real briefly anything about the electronics. I said I noticed it. Yes, yes. yes. Um, but before we um, jump to that, I want to add one thing and then I'll open it to the board for any questions that they have. Um, you had mentioned earlier about our town home associations. We have three in town. They are currently not tied to our hauling contract, like our single family homes. Although one, uh, Union Square does use advanced disposal, and uh, I believe that they negotiated similar pricing. Um, and Cranberry Lake North, I know, is looking into it. I honestly don't know where they're at. Dave, do you know where they're no, at, perchance? No, I don't. Um, and then uh, the other uh, town home association, I believe they use waste management, and um, their board was not open to any discussion uh, at this time. That doesn't mean we want to pursue it later. I think we should. But just, I just wanted to mention. And that. just so we're clear, that this uh, commercial ordinance is for non-residential. Right. Yes. yes, but I just wanted Couldn't to clarify because you had mentioned earlier. So yeah. I just wanted everybody to understand. Coming. I think that's something we're going to try to get on the next branch. Yes. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Okay, with that, who has questions about the commercial? I have several questions. Okay, sure. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming to that. <laughs> uh, first of all, you mentioned that there was an opposition to this kind of ordinance. Did the opposition come from the Hollis community? Uh, the there's, no, there's no opposition to this ordinance as written. The Holland community has agreed that they are okay with it. 
the opposition I was speaking about was in Springfield, where we had oh. the debate down there where they basically stripped away municipal power you've had for decades. Okay. I assume from reading this that the purpose of this ordinance is to increase the number of, or the amount of recycling done by the commercial establishments. That correct, sir. And this business of having the threat, if you, if I can use that word, of going to one contract for the whole commercial establishments, um, is that the hook that you're using to get these people to recycle? I mean, why, why are we, uh, it seems like one thing has nothing to do with the other. Um, the 50% level that was put into state law was something that the hauling community put into state law themselves. So they set the bar themselves to get the 50% of businesses recycling. Uh, if, if they don't reach that, they've agreed that you can proceed on with the franchise. So really they, they negotiated and they agreed to that language in the state law. Now, the, to, to operationalize, to get the haulers to get active in your town, to talk to your businesses about recycling will only occur if you pass this ordinance. Otherwise, they have no obligation to meet that 50%. If you do nothing, you will have no salespeople in your town beyond the normal activity. If you do this, you will get on their radar and they're going to tell their sales guys, start talking to the Hainesville businesses, we got to get them up to 50%. Well, and the benefit of us if we do decide to pursue a commercial franchise is then we don't have all different Hollers showing up on different days. Yes. But yeah, I'm a very strong advocate, and we've got a lot of data from the towns that have done it. Uh, it's, you know, we, businesses in the last franchise we did got up to a four yard container, which is a large container, empty once a week, no additional cost. It's embedded in their refuse disposal cost. Their refuse disposal costs are cheaper than 90% of the businesses that own that franchise. So they got cheaper rates and recycling. But the idea of going to a, one franchise, if you will, for doing all the commercial um, refuse collection, you can do that without this or No, you have to do this. No, you can't. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. Of this. Yeah. They made it much more difficult. Before, all you had to do was issue an RFP, award a contract, and then wait 15 months to implement. Now they made this additional step. You have to do a three-year study before get to that step of issuing an RFP and go through the RFP. So it's a five-year process, basically. Okay. So you can't start it without this work. Now, it, all right, let's say we do this, we go through the whole period of time, and then we go out with an RFP. If some of the commercial businesses have a contract with an individual caller that goes beyond that period of time, what happens? They get grandfathered in until the end of that contract, or does that contract lapse, or what? Uh, before you, if you were serious about doing it, you, I would advise your attorney to have you start licensing your haulers for commercial businesses, a lot of do. And then once you award that contract to that one hauler, you're only going to issue one commercial license. That's a year-to-year -year arrangement with you. They don't have a guarantee if their contracts extend beyond their license period. Oh well. Okay. Thank you. It sounds like some increased stiff arm twisting. I'm not saying it's bad, but it is. Oh, yeah. um, the, the licensing approach, especially if somebody already well, has a contract. You don't need to do but, that now, but, but if you but can as, But as Mr. Willis described, in the, the, the end game doesn't necessarily mean you have to franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, you could get to that point and just continue the process as yeah. it is. Uh, you you've still accomplished the goal of uh, increasing the amount of recycling that's going on. Businesses in the community. And we definitely want to alert your businesses that this is voluntary. That the sales guy doesn't go in there and say this is a mandate. I'm not saying that they would. But. So, anyway, um, you know, we want your business community to know that you pass this ordinance and that they might see some sales activity. Some people come in and then ask you about recycling as they incur in that, that discussion. Downsize your refuse, increase your recycling. A lot of businesses can get, can get away with no net injuries. And, and, um, there are some neighboring business communities that, you know, would tell you that their businesses are happy to have the reduced cost and free recycling if you do go that route. 
because that's usually what the end result is. It saves them money and they get the recycling. Question. Um, Kathy, do you have any idea what um, what the business community is using now for their um, Do I? Yeah, okay. I don't. Okay. And the second thing is on page five of the ordinance, under penalties, I don't see the difference between oh, yeah. penalties. One is license. I have the same question. Uh, yeah. One is licensed, the other is registered. Yes. Oh, okay. That's the difference between. Okay. Once one and your, your attorney may just want to clean that up and get the license references out of there and just stick with the register. Um, that's up to you guys. Um, and the only thing I am oh, sorry. It is confusing to read that ordinance. I was going to add, Georgie, on that um, uh, not all of our businesses share with us because they have no reason to to you, who they use for a hauler. Um, I have some knowledge from talking and engaging in conversation or just witnessing who's hauling their trash and or sometimes, although I have to say it's been much better in recent years, we get complaints from people saying they have their hauler picking up at you know five in the morning and they can't take the noise and that type of thing. Now this, this will allow you, even though you can't report the information you get from the individual, each individual hauler, you can report it in the you will know which all that are in your town, and which ones are doing good with their customers on recycling, and what the overall number of businesses that actually recycle in your town are able to be able to answer that question. Any other questions? Well, we will um, discuss this at committee and uh, then talk about uh, whether we're prepared to adapt this at a future July or August meeting by the Walters Investment Group. Um, then, Walter, you want to mention the uh, yeah, use of the electronics? Um, well, the last executive committee meeting, I guess I riled up my executive committee. You said we had very calm meetings, but uh, um, we work very hard on legislation with the use of local government, uh, and we did get a bill in the hands to pass. Uh, it's waiting for the governor. Actually, it hasn't been sent to him yet. We play politics with our bill. Can you imagine that? Um, just like a lot of other bills. Uh, but, we're not exactly sure how that legislation is going to play in the marketplace at the end part of this year. We did get the goal raised. What was happening was they're selling the way they set the goals. It's very strange in, this, in the way we wrote it in the state law. It's based on the, the sales two years prior to the weight of the product sold. Well, everything else is lighter and lighter. Nobody's buying desktops. Nobody's buying big CRT lead TV. They're all flat. Everything is lighter and lighter and lighter. So the numbers kept going down and down and down, even though we were collecting more. We have the most successful program in the state. We collect over six pounds per person per year. Doesn't sound like you got a lot of the state averages three. Um, so we are collecting more and more and more. And the goal that the manufacturer had to pay for was less than less. We got that goal raised, but we're concerned that no one knows right now how much we've collected in Illinois how close we are to that new goal we put in. So I alerted the executive committee that, hey, we've taken $200,000 of our resources collectively as small company, and we've spent it to keep our program going because the demand is so great from our residents um, that we're going to run out of that money in August because we recycle so much. And we've knocked down the number of sites from 18 permanent sites to six. We used to have 40 different collection partners that did one day events like you guys. You can't even do those. You can't afford it. Um, so I just let them know that we have a board meeting in June. We don't have another full board meeting here until August. We could run out of money before that August board. So we need to have some sort of direction in June. Are we willing to spend more to keep the program going if for some reason that New, those new pounds don't trickle down to us. I don't know if they will or not. The way I'm reading things out there, it's, it's hit or miss. They can buy extra pounds on the spot market. They can, it's, a, it's really a wildly regulated situation out there. So to be prudent, we did pass the motion that's going to go to the full board that basically we will allot another $130,000 um, to get us through the rest of the year. But if we don't have a contract ready to go, 
next year, 2016, come by the November board meeting. A no cost contract. We used to get paid for the recyclables. If we don't have a no cost contract going into next year, we are going to drop out of the collection business. We cannot afford it anymore. And we will direct people to the retail outlets, and it's not going to be pretty. But we cannot continue to sustain those costs. Now, our hope is. Goal goes up a little bit next year under the new the law that we uh, uh, did get passed, temporary fix. Uh, but again, we, we're so big, our program is so big that the recyclers come to us and they don't have enough pounds from the manufacturers paying for those pounds to meet our need. That's my concern. We might have a recycler come to us and say, well, we can do a million pounds. We say, hey, we collected four to five million. So what are we going to do in that situation? So that's kind of the, the rocky road that we have with the electronics. We're a victim of our own success and the way that the funding has kind of flip-flopped. Manufacturers are doing everything they can to drive those costs down and try to push it back on the collectors. Uh, they were successful in doing that to us this year, but we can't sustain it. So, and I'm gonna expand uh, on this a little bit on your business, but I wanted Walter to explain it, which you did very well. I'm hoping that that, I have a worst case scenario on this, but I need to be prepared. Um, the way our meetings work and everything else, we need to be able to react to what we're going to do in the second half of the year. Um, if we can't find that no-cost contract that we're looking for, we're still looking for right now. We've got a couple of recyclers teasing us, but nothing in paper, nothing in Question. Do you think that if you didn't fund anymore that you would put pressure on the legislature to actually act and do something? That's a very good point. Um, the fact that we did get into distress last year towards the end of the year, it became a very powerful uh, tool for us to use with our legislators and Senator Pam Althoff, and I know her specifically. Uh, we did get a lot of traction with the legislators. It did help us to get into a little bit of dire straits. And, and that, that was actually my reaction at the executive was if we run out of money in August, then shut everything down and make a lot of noise about it. There's pros and cons to that, and that's why we're going to go to the full board. Obviously, it takes the full board to pass that anyway. Yeah. August isn't a good time to be crying because the legislators, hopefully they'll be out of there. But in the fall, they're not, in, in, the spring, in the late summer and fall, they're not listening to you. Um, so when we hit the, the trouble, part four session's going to start next year. I have a big deck 
that I had rebuilt. It would be about four feet. My my, uh, my shed would be about four feet off the deck. I, I mean, it, it just would be too practical. And on the right side of my property, I had a big oak tree, and uh, I couldn't put it there. Then I start cutting it all, cutting it all down. Nice looking tree. So I was coming here to ask you guys if there's some way that I could um, if right. for some type of variance with you guys to have voted that I could put it where I Well there is. I don't know if we need to go that route yet, Phil. You and I had a phone conversation yes. at the last week and I want to bring up the board entirely up to speed so they know what occurred. Um, Phil did apply for a permit for a chef. So he did not build this without a permit. He was granted the permit and was aware of what the rules were. Now, Phil explained to you that when Julie came out to mark the utilities, he found that utilities were under where he was placing the shed, which is not all that common, and sheds many times do over, go over utilities because it doesn't cause a problem. So what happened is when the inspector went out there, they said, hey, wait a minute, you didn't put the shed where you were supposed to. So that's the problem is, and what I explained to Phil on the phone, while I understand he had questions, what I did understand is why he didn't call us back and say, hey, I got the permit, you gave me the permit, you told me to put the shed this way, what do I do now? Is there a way I can put it someplace else? That did not occur. You decided on your own. I know you say NICOR told you something, yes. but you didn't have a name or anything. NICOR was telling us something different. Okay. So that's that's part of the problem. Right. Um, so I have been in contact with the building department. They're going to have Julie go back out. We're going to take a look at this. Now, this isn't being handled in a 24-hour turnaround. We're going to handle it in a timely manner. But if this had been brought to us when the question came up, it would have been expedited. Now we're in a problem where you went ahead and did something without consulting us, and we're gonna address it, but not everybody's gonna run around at the Lake County Building Department to get the answer overnight, because the, the shed is already where it is. So I don't mean any disrespect, but that's where we're at. And here's the other dilemma. If we decide that, yes, maybe you should ask for a variance in this case, then there's a special meeting set with this board, and our building department would be here. We would have a representative. Here's the dilemma I encounter and this board encounters. This is the time of year we issue a lot of shed permits. So I have had sheds go up already. One is within a block, not even a block, from where yours is. They followed the rules. You didn't. So now you get the variance. They want to know, well, how come he got to put his shed there? Because I really would have liked my day of my shed there. So that's the challenge that we deal with, just so you understand. Right. So the, the thing is, this is not going to be resolved tonight. I mean, if the trustees want to ask you a question or make a suggestion, I certainly support that. But this is in the building department's hands, and then they're going to come back to me, and as I promised you, we will do what we can. And then I will come back to the board and, and decide if we need a variance hearing, and I will let you know right away. So now that being said, does anybody have a comment or a question to fill at this time? I have a question, sir. Yes. Um, did you pour a concrete pad as a foundation? No, I built a, um, a wooden platform, and I used stone because I had to float the uh, foundation because my backyard is very uneven so I had to you know, kind of kick it up and try to get the, the but essentially it's on it, if you're on the foundation it isn't fixed to the ground you know no but I poured stone in, in it to make it so it wouldn't get walk on you wouldn't see my house a lot so I mean if, if everything didn't go your way can the shed be moved without dismantling uh, the shed is an up, it's just a foundation, um, but... Not it, saying it would be ideal. Yeah, it, it would be... A lot of work. Not fun. <laughs> it, would be, it wouldn't be a way I want to spend my Saturday. Okay, you take it How time consuming, Phil? Uh, well, just a, a good day, day and a half. Because there's 
about it, uh, a yard and a half of stone. And the way I did it is I have braces in it, so I'm just trying to shovel it, put it, shovel it, hopefully pull it up and move it where I have to. Then I'll have to dig down a little bit to kind of make it somewhat even and take out my, my two by six kickers and kind of readjust them to the contour of the, uh, the ground. So it's not easy, but I mean, it's, it's doable. And I figured if like I'm talking to you guys, maybe I could get some type of solution. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the building department is pursuing it. It's a very busy time of year for them. Right. So um, I do, and as I mentioned to you, um, uh, I'm on a reduced schedule this week. I'll be back full time next week. Um, but I, I spoke with our building department earlier today, so I think we can get this resolved. I don't know at this point what the answer is going to be, though, in all honesty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I talked to my neighbors and I asked them if they would mind it if I put it up where it was. I mean, just in case you guys were wondering. I thought I talked a lot of things that didn't really mind. Uh, Ted's actually my neighbor. Right. And another, well, I mean, it's not a good reason, but it's a kind of a personal reason for me and my fiance. We like talking to Ed, or to, to Ted and his wife. You know, sure, and, absolutely. And if we put it where you know, I was going to put it, we would block them out. And I kind of feel really bad about doing that. I mean, it's not really good for Yeah, but you can understand the building department right. oh, yeah. where their stand is. They issued the permit, right. and I applaud you for getting the permit, but you missed when you said, oh, I got a problem here. I don't think I can put it here. You really should have called back. That's the problem. I misread it on a Sunday, and me and my dad did it. Screw it up. But it was in the right place on your drawing that you submitted with the permit. Yeah, that was before Julie came out. And right. I, I so my it. point is you made a decision of change without yeah. coming back to the building department, and that's the problem. Yeah, I don't I mean to keep harping that, but no, no, that's, I, that's I, the I problem. Really, yeah, no, I yeah. understand that. And just where, where, it, where it, I mean, it could go, it just it doesn't really make a lot of sense if being 10 feet off the back of my property line and it's just like I said, it'll be in the middle of my yard. It, okay. It's just yeah. ugly and unpractical. Okay. So <laughs> Alright. Point taken. Let's see what we can do. Okay. okay. Hey, just All have right. one question. Yes. Sir. Is just the foundation up or is the whole shed finished? No, it's just the foundation, but it like I said it's all made out of uh, two by fours and two by sixes and I have stone inside of it. No, what I'm getting at is if the whole shed is not complete. No, so you don't do anything further until this. Whole no, no, sorry. I it's been sitting for almost a long time. I haven't touched it. I'm just waiting for uh, some type of. Well, I was only made aware of this last week. So you said it's been sitting there a month. Oh no, I, no, I talked to um, Bob Springer. Um, it's had been about a month ago. Okay. All right. I did not know that. I will ask about that. Yeah, that's no problem. We had emails okay. uh, back and forth. And okay. We okay. So he's yeah, I, uh, uh, so Bob Springer or Bob Sherwood? I'm sorry. Bob Springer. Bob Springer. Okay. All righty. Phil, so, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have one more resident, Ted Mueller. Thanks. Any questions? 
No, Ted, I just want to say that as a former mayor, you certainly know the procedure for a variance. So we have to go through a few okay. things, and we are in contract mm -hmm. with the Lake County Building Department, right. and we have given them a job to do, and they are doing what we contracted them. I, I did yeah. mention that to uh, Yeah, to so uh, it is in the process of being mm -hmm. handled, so mm -hmm. let's let it go through the process. But as, as a neighbor, I see no problem. Well, I appreciate that for the record. That's good. Thanks. Okay. By, by the way, you have all Catherine Bryant in your audience today. Okay. Good to know. All right. Thank you. Okay. So if there's no further public comments, we'll move on to the omnibus vote agenda. If I can have a motion. So moved. Second. Roll call. Trustees Georgian Duberstein. Aye. Barrett. Aye. 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 Daly. Aye. And George Duberstein. Aye. Okay, at this time we'll move on to reports and communications. We'll start with our village engineer, Greg Ruling. Thanks, Mayor. Two things today. Uh, number one, we're on the omnibus agenda. There was a Request to approve uh, Chicago Land Navy contractors. Uh, pay request number one for $72,985. That project was completed over about three days, uh, probably about a little less than a month ago. Uh, we had a $75,000 budget to work with, so we got right up to the budget and did the patchwork uh, over there on the east side of town. Uh, located most of the patches uh, in anticipation of doing a uh, major street resurfacing in the next year or two out there. So most of the patches are actually in the center line of the street, so those will be maintained. We're just going to uh, grind closer to the curve lines and then just pave over. So uh, it's basically the first phase of getting these roads redone. Uh, the next thing is uh, Washington Street Lake County DOT improvements. Uh, they actually bid that job out recently. A successful bidder or apparently bidder with her excavating. Uh, as you guys may be aware, is that there's a Haynesville owned uh, force main, San Teresa force main, and part of the relocation cost is, uh, or all of the relocation cost is to be borne by the village of Haynesville. Uh, the original estimate from Patrick Engineering December 2012 when I met with the mayor was. $119,876 and the price that we just got from the county uh, was $205,661 so $119 to $205. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually requested a meeting with Lake County DOT uh, probably the week of June 22nd just to review all the costs and make sure that uh, none of the line items are things that uh, we should be paying for get a little better explanation as to uh, how it went so high. And also, uh, uh, Greg and I had talked earlier today, so once he provides me with that information, um, depending on what exactly is uh, stated, uh, I will be talking to uh, Emily Carey and Paula Trigg and different individuals just to see where we can go with this. Yeah, we've got, uh, I've got Andrew, we downloaded the plans today from their website to take a closer look at their estimate. Uh, when they bid these larger projects like that, there are 100, 120 different line items that were assigned uh, different uh, quantities of the line items. So we're just going to go through that on a more detailed basis with the plans and make sure that uh, we're not paying for anything that we shouldn't. Greg, in your experience, would there be any precedent for, since part of the increase in cost, I would assume, is because time has passed and journey costs go up over time, would there be any precedent for asking the county to pick up some of the costs, our increased costs, because of their delays? Sure. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know of any precedent for that, but. But I will be doing it, and that's my point. At that June 22nd <laughs> meeting, I uh, you know, will attack it from an uh, uh, engineering numbers and quantities standpoint, uh, from a uh, you know, uh, political or uh, county working with municipality standpoint. Uh, 
we'll have the mayor there also. We'll plead our case. Recognizing that prices do go up over time, you would think, well, let me put it this way, how could the estimates be that far off, not con considering that prices do increase? Sure, sure. Uh, you know, some line items, uh, you know, the cost for the entire project was over their original estimate. It wasn't just our specific uh, line item right there. Generally speaking, I would say costs go up 25 to 3% construction costs. Recently, you know, we had, they only had two bidders on this particular job. It was Burger and uh, Lake Helen Grady. Normally on a job like this, you probably have three, four, maybe five bidders. So I don't know if there's been more uh, state work, more contracts with Lake County DOT, and there's just the less bidders, the less uh, less competition, the higher the price of the Was the winning bid the lowest bid? Winning bid was the lowest bid test. Thank you. We're talking about a 100% increase. I think that's a little outrageous for just a couple of years. Yes, and that's why we're taking the stance that we are. And that's why the meeting is set up and we have asked for answers. Okay, great. Thank you. We're just letting everybody know so that when we can report back, I'm yeah. just venting. Yeah, no, I get you. Yeah, believe me, Greg heard my venting earlier. Yes. <laughs> We're going to look at it from strictly uh, you know, engineering quantity standpoint and uh, see if we can get something reduced. So go from there. Okay, thank you, Greg. Any other questions for Greg? Village Attorney Jim Rack. Thank you, Mayor. Just briefly, uh, we've been working on an updated contract with Rolf Campbell Associates for the Village Planning Services. We expect that that uh, contract will be ready for presentation to the board and consideration and a vote at the next board meeting. Okay, thank you. Jim, in, in one year we work in these contracts, I, I don't have any knowledge about this one to date, uh, but any contract that I've been involved in, we negotiated. I always look for lower dollar figures. Are we trying to less cost? Are we looking for less cost? Well, I, you know, I, I've been looking at it more from a legal perspective and protecting the village interest. I think Mayor Soto has been involved in the discussions about costs. Yeah, actually, uh, when Manhart took over Rolf Campbell and absorbed the consulting firm, they never changed the contract, and Al hasn't updated his fees in 10 years. So this, works for me. this contract is about a slight increase, and I mentioned slight, and more so to get the language of the contract in part with all the other Manhart contracts. I, I'm just sticking with yeah. my Mr. Chief. Okay. I know, and I understand, but that's the purpose of why this came up in the first place. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, Public Works Superintendent Jeff Gailey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I had put the report in front of everybody uh, tonight. This is something new uh, that will actually end up going into the board packets uh, before the meeting, so you have time to review it. Unfortunately, this Friday uh, we had a couple of incidents and I was not able to get into the office to get this completed, so my apologies for that. Uh, if anybody has any questions or if you'd like to see maybe something else, uh, that I may have overlooked, but this kind of just gives you a general status report of the different projects that are going on, where we're at with the certain projects, like the street light replacement, we're 50% complete today, they're going to be back out there tomorrow. Uh, the tree project just started Monday, we've got seven down today, so these are numbers for each meeting that I can just keep updating you as time goes on. And then uh, this also kind of gives you an idea of where uh, some of the seasonal are actually spending some of their hours because we are supplying two seasonals to help they remove the trees. I have one seasonal employee helping uh, Tony with the light installation, plus the ongoing hours that we're spending mowing a garbage pickup you know, and such. Um, and then I have actually have breakdowns of emergency calls that we should get called out. So if there's extra, you know, overtime on the timesheets or what have you, so it's just kind of a 
a more detailed explanation of what the department's doing for the most part, how the, how the time is getting spent. Um, so again, that will be something that will be provided to you, um, you know, by weekly every time we have more meetings. And then the uh, other piece of paper I put in front of you was just a kind of a fact sheet of what the actual village of Hainesville, what the Public Works Department is, what we have to maintain, um, things that we need to put in our long term capital improvement, capital replacement, you know, everything that we're responsible for. Um, you know, maybe some people want to know there's 124 high fire items in the village, maybe some people don't, but I think it's good for everybody to know these things. So, as that we're moving forward to look at, uh, you know, for budgeting purposes and replacement, you know, the numbers are in front of you, so everybody just kind of stays on board and knows, you know, everything that we have to take care of now. Any impression on the new lights? Uh, I've heard, actually, I've actually driven around a couple of times just tonight to see what they look like. They're very bright. Uh, the light is going in the right place, so it's not. The old ones kind of went out. These are more down on the road, so it's lighting up the intersection a little bit better. We were using 175 watt mercury vapors. Uh, the old style right now, we're down to the 55 watts. Yeah, once we're all done, we call ComEd and they will wrap. I think. All right. We, yeah, we have worked the numbers. Yeah. Work. It's reworked. It's going to be quite a substantial savings to have yeah. um, it is. It is interesting. Uh, I went out the first night that they were lit up in our area, and it does put a lot of light on the street where you want it. Obviously, what's interesting is I was at the far end of my yard where the street light used to carry to a desert. I almost walked right into my path because I couldn't see because the light doesn't go there anymore, which is a good thing in yeah. some ways because people complain about light going the wrong place. Yeah, so. that is intrusive to, to residents as it yeah. used to be. Um, and as friendly, I mean, the, the, the fixture, I mean, our electrician complimented, you know, it's a well-built fixture. He was impressed. The ease that they're going in, they were anticipating on doing eight a day, and I think the first day they did 20.